in Prague, there are buildings in the Jewish quarter that go back to the 13th century. The Altmoy Shul is believed to have been built in 1270. And the cemetery, of course, which the first tombstones from around 1429. To be able to walk in a site where the buildings are from Gothic times, Renaissance times, Baroque times, is such a unique experience. The architecture throughout Prague is just so beautiful. There's no place like it. So these are buildings that are from the 13th century through, say, the 17th century. I love drawing them, and but I try to continuously come up with new images of them. For instance, the various images that I did of the cemetery. Once I was in the cemetery, I did many color paintings where when I looked at the Baroque tombstones, the Baroque tombstones looked like the buildings all around Prague. To me, the cemetery was a metaphor for how the Jews had to live in close quarters. Here they were buried some places 12 layers because they couldn't expand. And so I would do drawings and paintings of the tombstones in the cemetery becoming the ghetto itself. So I'd draw little windows on them. Or I would do other... Th there was one image, I looked at a, a tombstone, and it looked like the golem. The Jewish cemetery is such a unique landscape. I love being there. I love just walking there. I usually am not interested in painting or drawing personalities. I might do something related to a personality. For example, I did painting where Kafka lived, Alchemist Lane. When I painted Alchemist Lane, the chimneys had the different colors of the various, of the smoke coming out. The alchemists, as they were doing their experiments, bromine would give brown smoke or, or so on. So I'll do things related to, say, a personality like Kafka without drawing or painting Kafka. When I proposed to Elie Wiesel to do a book on the Golem in around 78, 79, we spoke about going to Prague together, and I didn't really know about the Altneuschel until I started to do the research on the book, the interior, what it looked like. When I did the book with Ellie, I only worked in black and white. And so those drawings looked like etchings from the 16th century. I wanted to have works that were other than just the illustrations of the Golem, so I did a whole new series of works. And that's when I started to do the Altneuschel in Jerusalem. It was I started to learn more about Prague legends in general rather than just the various legends associated with the Golem. So as I learned more about Prague legends and Prague history, somehow I got the idea to do that. I was first asked to do the Torah Curtain. And the way that came about was that Ferro Banyai, the president of the Prague Jewish community, saw the exhibition of the Torah Curtain I did for Temple Emmanuel. And he said, when you're in Prague the next time, We'll discuss with the chief rabbi, Rabbi Sedon, about you doing a Torah curtain for the high synagogue. Rabbi Sedon said, no. He said, you'll do it for, I want you to do it for the Alt Noi Shul, not the high synagogue. When I met with the textile curators, they said, why don't you also do it for the Torah reading desk and for the cantor's desk? And then, then Rabbi Sedon said, well, why don't you also add the three Torah covers? When I first met with Penn and Fletcher, I did line drawings, and they just reproduced them pretty much as line. And I didn't even realize till I looked at them that they're only line drawings. It needs more when it's going to be on the parochial. But I wanted to make it rich as possible because I was looking at the textiles in the book, the textile book published by the Jewish Museum in Prague. I showed them what had been done before and I wanted it in the tradition of what was done before. I had images of lions from before, just outlines of lions, but I wanted to make it more embellished. The lions are much more decorative with uh, very flowery manes. There was a very beautiful image I did of Jerusalem as the crown of a Torah that I changed to include uh, the Altnoi Shul in Jerusalem because the legend is the stones are from the temple in Jerusalem. One day they'll go back to Jerusalem. Very often on Torah curtains you'll see two pillars. Instead I decided to do the 12 Torah pointers symbolizing the 12 tribes. I did lions, which you often see, lions with double tails, the Czech lions although I didn't do them as the heraldic lions, because I thought those tails were too stiff. And then I added the Torah crown and the uh, phrase from, the verse from one of the Psalms from Out of the Depths I Call to Thee, which is supposedly the idea why the cantor stands lower. I was able to find 
a font from the 1526 Prague Kagada. What I kept changing the most was the Torah covers. It was the Hebrew letters Kuf and Lamed for Holiness of the Lord. And then I incorporated from the Lamed the flag of the Jewish community, the Torah crown. For the large Torah, the, the smaller Torahs won't have the crown. And then for the Shulchan, there's the breastplate of the high priest with two lions. And for the uh, Amud, where the cantor stands, I kept thinking, what should I have? You reach what's the most obvious and should have been thought out before as an open book. mistakes that we can make. Uh, we had a machine failure here. Mm -hmm. uh, or this is an area where there are some bad stitching. When I first saw how Penn and Fletcher embroidered it, I couldn't speak. I, I just cried. And when I showed the, cura the textile curators, when I first began to work on the project, they said, you know, the, pen the way Penn and Fletcher is sewing this is the way this had been done hundreds of years ago. Without each other, we could not do this. If I had not worked with Penn and Fletcher before, I could never have undertaken this, nor would I have been asked. There's a famous saying that was attributed to several rabbis, that every step I take is towards Jerusalem. So to me, every step I take is towards Prague. really like the lions, so we put the lions on. And um, then he said, well, if you're going to have lions, they have to have closed mouths. I said, it looks like they need dentures with closed mouths. <laughs> <laughs>